to, um, um, if, if you have a question, raise your hand. I'll call on you. If you would, please, you know, l let us know your name and, and where, you, where you live so we have an idea of where you are. And then what your question is, well, if, if Steve doesn't know the answer, we have other company representatives who are here that we can call upon to answer those questions as well. So let me start up here to the left, and we'll just work around through the room. Sorry. Yes, sir. Me, oh, Who you got? Over here. One at a time. Gentleman okay. right here in front. I'm Fidel Rodriguez from San Luis. Okay. My question is, how can you be cost effective? You guys are in for the money. How can you be a cost effective to transport that uh, cyanide from Winnemucca all the way east down here over the uh, from uh, by, by rail over the, over the pass by rail, loaded on, offloaded on the tanker trucks, ship it 200 miles north and west of us and be cost effective. Why did you pick our valley where we we need jobs? True, but we don't need this type of this type of. Uh, uh, so, so your so your question about why here. did we pick right. this facility? There, okay, you've Steve, got you uh, you've got out uh, counties north and east of us that need jobs also. That the, you don't have the bad roads that we have, Levita Pass to get back to to. Uh, Okay. Um, we chose the, the reason we chose uh, uh, this site was because of the economics of being able to bring the product down via rail. A receptive customer that owns the rail siding that we had uh, entered into negotiations with. And uh, okay. We're, we're, we're answering your questions. Pardon me. Oh, sorry. I, I, no, it's not a customer that owns the facility. Excuse me. So, um, uh, yeah, SLRG Railroad is the is the uh, owns the site right now. Our road goes going east in the winter time. You cannot go through that path. You're not going to be able to deliver daily. Let me go back over here, ma'am. Yes. Darlene oh. Jordan, Fort Garland area. Hi, darling. Who has the final say whether this goes through or not? The local zoning committee is the next step where we zoning commission, commission excuse me, is where we have, uh, uh, in order to change the zoning of the, of the facility to industrial zoning, is the is the next step. If that is, uh, um, have you talked to our commissioner? Have you communicated with our commission? Not yet. Yes, this, the this is the first step that we've made. We have talked with the zoning committee, zoning commission, excuse me, and they have it on the agenda. Uh, Tom is the one who could probably answer yeah. the questions better about uh, about the local communication so far. Yeah, my name is Tom Karras, and we have so far talked with the local land use administrator down in San Luis. Uh, the next step is in March to talk with the uh, uh, zoning committee. Planning commission. planning commission, I'm sorry, and I believe there are seven members to that, and it's going to be a public hearing that's going to, in fact, it's already been advertised, and it will continue to be advertised. When is that day? March 9th. March the 9th. At what time? 10 a.m. It's in San Luis. They changed it. It's 1 o'clock. They changed it to 1? Okay. We will make sure we fully communicate that with everybody. The next, hold on a second, the next step after that is to go to the county commissioners the county commissioners are the final say in whether the rezoning request is approved or not. That's the sequence of events that we will be going through. And of course, you all have a big say in that because this is your community and these are your officials. So this is the information meeting. We want to answer your questions based on how we communicate this to you. You let your people know, your, your officials know. Does that answer your question? Not yet. Where are they going to you know, uh, it's, the question is where are they going to have a room, where are they going to have space in San Luis to... Uh, Here's the, the information yeah. they've given. Well, well, the information has already been published here, but I am sure after what we see here tonight, because this far expected our expect, our, our, what we thought would be here, we are going to obviously be talking with them and letting them know about this turnout, and we will, they will, I'm sure, 
move as necessary into a facility that will hold this many people. So we will deal with that. That will be taken care of. I mean, the, the officials will deal with that, and we'll be working with them on that. The meeting was scheduled uh, Wednesday, March 9th, 10 a.m., in the conference room next door to the clerk and recorder's office at 400 Gaspar. So if you know that room is too small, then, then the county land use administrator, uh, we will coordinate with him to see if we can find a larger location uh, for that meeting. Let me go back over here. Let me go over here. It, it was originally scheduled for 10, it is now 1 o'clock, I've been told, but that will be communicated. My name is Renea Raffold, I'm the Regional Environmental Health Program Manager for the Stonehouse Valley. Okay. I'm sorry, I have so many questions. Sorry. We, we will repeat it back as well. Give her the mic. Sorry. Okay, so you gentlemen talked about the, okay, the picture that we have up there. The, you talked about those vehicles and that transport but not the train, okay? The okay. train cars, are those going to be as secure as those? Yes. I have another question. So, so the question was about the rail cars, and will the rail cars be as secure as the tanker trucks? The Every type of transport vehicle that is used to transport hazardous materials has to be in a DOT-approved uh, vessel. And the rail cars that are used to transport uh, sodium cyanide have had the same uh, similar precautions taken with them in that they have no bottom valves on them, valving or anything to leak out, the leak. They are, uh, they are offloaded through the top uh, with the same dip tube that I talked about, uh, that mechanism for, uh, for taking the product out of them. And they are sealed and closed with security seals on them when they're going uh, up and down the road, up and down the uh, the rail. Okay, I have one more question. Um, will there be training for first responders and emergency preparedness and the, the, the people who are the first responders in the same area? Okay, the, the question is about training for the first responders that are in this area as well. we talk about training. Yes. What we do is we coordinate in advance of coming in. We meet with local response. I'll repeat the question. I'm sorry. The question was about training of local emergency responders. And what we do is we go into communities and have meetings. We have had several meetings uh, ongoing over the years. We've been, we've been supplying the Cripple Creek and Victor mine for several years. And there are many operations throughout North America that we go to and train the local responders in the in the communities, and also responders uh, at the at the mine sites themselves. So that's in Keller County, right? right. Let me go to the lady next to you here. Yes, ma'am. If you are already supplying them, why can't you just use that route and leave us out of it? Okay. Why 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 do that? Why are we changing? Changing to do this. Yeah, when we were talking about, one of the questions uh, earlier was about the economics of shipping the product to uh, where it's going. Right now, it's...